Interphase Video presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities, and the Frankie Smith Funeral Home. Welcome to Fairfield Today. I'm your host, Paul Jasson. Thank you for joining us. It's a, a lovely day here in Lancaster and Fairfield County. It's a, as far as lovely days go, compared to being in the middle of February, we're very fortunate to have the kind of weather we've had up to this point. So uh, we're, we're just very thankful. And, We'll take all these days and then get really nice and have spring. So that's what we're, uh, that's what the package looks like, and we hope that that comes about. Uh, one of the folks we enjoy, really enjoy talking to, and, and many times it's during festival time because uh, the OUL uh, artistic department out there, the theater group, just does such a great job. Especially one of them we always talk about is at uh, Lancaster Festival time, is they always have something planned for the festival, and it's always a biggie. But there are other big events going on with the OUL artistic and theater department out there, and it's a pleasure to have their director, uh, Victor Jones, with us. Victor. Thank you uh, for having me. Is Excited. There, is there ever a minute that's not on? For the art, for the for the theater department out there, you always have so many irons in the fire. About two weeks at the end of August and two weeks at the end of December. Very small. Nothing. Very, very small windows, but I'm actually still planning and working. I was going to say, there's no time off for that. No time well, off. Well, now we're really talking about uh, some major things coming yeah. up. Ten years. I know. Where does time go? I know. Started with a little hope and a dream, and here we are. Here we are. Be careful what you wish for, because, and I think everybody understands now, yeah. Ohio University in Lancaster, I mean, it's just a, a renowned theater department, certainly, uh, and no small uh, effort from Victor Jones here to well, get that you. done. It, it's just been a, a remarkable turnaround. Been fun to watch and be involved in a very yeah. small way and have you on and talk about it, but... Uh, it's more than just, well, we, we have 10 years and good for us. Yeah. You've, you've got a big plan. Uh, we do. We have a lot of exciting things coming up. Uh, three big shows in the next six months. Three shows in six months. That oh, is that's, a lot to take That's on. a lot to take on. And hearing me say it is a little scary at the same time. Uh, coming up at the end of February, February 27th through March 1st, uh, the romantic um, show Almost Maine. We're bringing back three uh, guest artists, alumni guest artists, who graduated back in 2012 and 2012. 13. It's an encore performance. So they're coming back to work with our wow. current, current students. They'll arrive a couple days just before opening night to do their roles in the show. So that's ex exciting for the students to have that. Now, and did any of those three go on to stay in this? Mason Taylor. Okay. Mason Taylor was just honored with a special award by Sam Mendez, Ooh. who's the director of uh, the new movie. Uh, 1917. A big director. He was involved with an independent film and uh, his film was selected as part of this special event of launching 1917. So Mason's coming back and to... And here he is, and one here of the he is, three. One of the three doing an encore performance of the original roles that he did back in 2012. Nice, nice. And, and so then it all begins. Now, I mean, uh, yeah. uh, I mean, to have these people back and to do that, I think it says a lot for uh, what effect it had on them when they were just young people Right, here. that they're still passionate and find yeah. a way to still stay involved in the arts. And Travis Huddleston, who was in Google at Google in New York City, is returning home as one of the guest artists. And Cherise Hubbard-Legabo, Hubbard, yeah. who is now married with two children living out in Arizona, is coming all the way back for this special uh, performance also. And back also. in the day, just a young OUL student. Uh, just a young just OUL student, Breaking yeah. her in and yeah. obviously had an impact. She was involved in the very first performance during the Lancaster Festival. She played Shelby in our production of Steel Magnolias back oh, in sure. uh, when we first launched the it's Lancaster been, Festival that's show. That's been a long time ago now, six, yeah. seven years, I don't know. Eight, nine really? years, yeah. Yeah, wow. Because this year coming up, I believe, is our eighth or ninth with production the during with the Lancaster Festival, yes. And, and is there anything we can talk about there? Is that way sure. too far off? No, that's not too far off. Uh, the Sound of Music premieres during July 26th, a uh, featured event on the Lancaster Festival that day. We have a show at 1 o'clock this time, 1 o'clock and 7 o'clock on Sunday, July 26th during the Lancaster Festival. And, and auditions are coming up for that. Uh, children's auditions are March 7th and 8th. That's for the 7 
children of Captain Von Trapp. The Von Trapp family. Uh, and then the adult auditions for The Sound of Music are uh, May 2nd and 3rd, uh, later on uh, in the spring. And, and just a, kind of a, I'll, I'll throw out a name here, and just a very small connection there. Uh, one of my high school band members was named Lauren Solt, Larry Solt. Lauren was a band director out at Fairfield Union for many years. He left there. Uh, went to uh, Vermont and, be, and he got married. He went to the Conservatory of Music in Cincinnati. He played trumpet. His then wife played flute. They go up there. She ends up working at an inn owned by the young girl, the youngest girl in the Von Trapp family. Wow. That's the inn where they work. And she's still around <laughs> wow. and still up in Stowe, Vermont. And But is, is there just a better musical than The uh, Sound of Music? It's a, it's a great show. Um, we have a terrific cast and crew and creative team also involved with this. Um, my high school friend Jennifer Myers, who's been my assistant director uh, for the past couple shows, is along for the ride. Harriet Rollins-Hill, who's an equity guest artist, well known name. Uh, who's the vocal music director. She was involved with uh, Marie Osmond's production. She's performed with... Uh, uh, in Sweeney Todd on Broadway, she's our vocal music director. I was involved with The Sound of Music with Carol Lawrence back when I was involved with uh, Kenley Players many, many years Kenley ago. Kenley Players, so we have a from the I know, so we have a lot of history among our creative team and involvement with The Sound of Music, but it is uh, a classic Broadway musical theater piece, so we're excited about it. And, and we'll give a little quick plug here too to uh, Fairfield Union. Fairfield Union is doing it also. And, and that is uh, their big musical this year with uh, uh, some people that you're connected with, yes. some, some great people out there. But, I mean, obviously they see, the, oh, I guess it was maybe 30 years ago they did that. That's what Mrs. Ritten said something about One that to me. One of her first ones yeah. that she did, and now 30 years later they're She's reviving doing it, yes. that. That's, that's amazing. And I'll be there, I think it's uh, March 27th and 28th, right. give them a plug. Right. I'll be out there in the Thursday, audience. Friday, I think. Uh, rooting them on. Yeah, that... And again, I think that shows the value in, uh, in, in about any age being able to do that, where right. you find young people, young people for you, uh, it, it just it draws you in. It, it does, and, it, and it's exciting to be a part of all that. And then um, the other big thing that's coming up, it's a one night only event, Saturday, April 18th, our 10th anniversary gala. Uh, it's a one night only event, tickets are on sale, it's at seven o'clock. We are doing a musical cabaret, looking back at 10 years of musical theater on our campus. 23 OUL alumni students and community members will be on the stage for a one night only black tie gala event on stage with the cast to look back at musical theater over the past 10 years. When you took this over and you dream and you dream big about where this thing might go, um, I suppose this is in your, in your weakest moment when you were dreaming biggest, hope this would be where it could all go. Oh, I, I never really thought that we would be here talking about a 10-year no anniversary. Does. No one does. 40-some um, shows, dozens of showcases, having people come back and celebrate something like this. No. Uh, oh, gosh. Uh, Let's just stay in the moment. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, so. that's big. That's big. When it's you a big it. deal. And still, you have all these plans. You know, we're already looking down to the festival and oh. and things coming with that with Gary Sheldon and the and the great festival we have here. Every year, you you come up with another idea that seems to be last year's. It couldn't be any bigger and better. Well, th this year it's Sound of Music, and wow. we just keep going. Winners, I uh, believe, six Tony Awards. Um, the movie. Uh, it's the last collaboration between Rogers and Hammerstein. Also, you have the Sound of Music, How Do You Solve a Problem Like Maria, Climb Every Mountain, Doe a Deer, you know, all these wonderful classic musical theater songs that someone will say, oh, that's from The Sound of Music. I didn't remember it was actually from that. And, and let's talk a little bit about the facility you have out oh, there wow. at Ohio University, Lancaster. That's been uh, remodeled, revived, redone. Bigger and better than and it, ever. Great. And, it, and we keep, uh, and keep, keep adding things. We keep adding on. We recently had some new stage extensions provided. We just had a new uh, Black Traveler, still money from the theater renovation fund of donors who are continually giving uh, to the program. Uh, we have uh, some new rigging that's being updated from 1968 for the safety, for the overhead electrical sure. and battens and sure. all that, and roping and rigging that. We have to keep this, this space safe for our students and the actors that are on stage. So we're constantly using that money that the donors are giving to, to maintain and uh, renovate the theater. And, and I want to, I guess I think a little bit about Ohio University out there and how willing they've been. Uh, 
participants in what you've done. I think back certainly from the festival, Ray Wilkes is yep. one of the earlier names who understood what being involved in the arts in terms of the festival, but then certainly with, with your end uh, at, at the theater department, uh, uh, the administration out there has been very good in, in supporting oh, what you amazing. do. Amazing, amazing. And if you walk in the north lobby, which is the main entrance right yes. now, yes. you can tell there's been kind of a revitalization in the arts and a, and a, and a, a passion about contributing with the ongoing mission. Uh, when you walk in, you can now see where the former bookstore were. I was going to say, that's gone. And it says Wilkes Gallery, and there's a beautiful art space there. You also have a new sign right above Wagner Theater, which says Wagner Theater. You can't but help miss that. There was a big desk in the lobby if you yes. it's right. in the process of being removed so the pathway open is area. open and oh, more open and all that so you'll notice the 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 renovation has expanded into the northern lobby and it's really welcoming when you come in and is that the point of a lot of this renovation is to make it a more open and and uh, inviting inviting kind of area so that you that desk if you remember you kind of walked in sure. you kind of stopped and, and walked that's where all the computers it. were that's where you got your tickets right everything was so right it's there. been moved over just a little bit okay. we're still in that lobby all area right. uh, we're over closer to the library entrance okay. but you'll see us there but we're still in that main area again it's uh, again the university has been very open to this and but, but the things you've brought back to the university well, thank you. have been remarkable you know a local young man coming from high school here yeah. and, uh, getting involved in high school and has a dream and golly how how great is it that you get to celebrate virtually your entire life to this point here in right. one town and just see the transition that's occurred it, it's it's all exciting it's it's um uh, humbling at the same time and you're counting your blessings and looking back and this is a time of reflection and those are all good things to celebrate and and, and be be aware of the, the gratitude and give that back and, and try to remember to always keep giving it and paying it forward. Well, it's fun to think about the things that have occurred in the past, but you don't have much time to do that because you have so many irons in the fire. We're moving forward here. Now all the way we've talked about from almost right now through the festival, which is through you know, August. late summer. So, yes. I mean, uh, uh, tell us again what, what's coming up here. Sure. Kind of go through a, a little a Sure. Little during the, here. During the 10th anniversary season, coming up in just a sh short weeks, is the uh, romantic play, Almost Maine. It's uh, February 27th through March 1st. Tickets are available now. Evenings at 7 o'clock and a Sunday matinee at 1 o'clock. Coming up on April 18th, a one-night-only event. 23 alumni, 23 alumni and community members celebrating 10 years of musical theater. A little sneak peek of songs from the past on stage with a grand piano, uh, guys in tuxes, girls in black formal gowns, uh, pre-show VIP event in the Wilkes Gallery, uh, light hors d'oeuvres, that sort of thing. Tickets are available now. That's Saturday, April 18th at 6.15 for the VIP event, 7 o'clock for the actual show. And then during the historic Lancaster Festival, The Sound of Music, July 26th through August 9th, eight performances. Tickets on sale for all of those things right now. And, and again, all that's on your website. You all on a, the website. You have a great website that's very interactive and, and order things. You can go in to get them still from the university. You can. The box office is, is already open. It opened on February 10th. Okay. And will remain open on, until each show. And we're open an hour before each performance also. Yeah, it's a, it's a great place. if if, if by some reason, you're one of the, I hope, few people that haven't gone out there to the Wagner Theater. It's just a, a great venue, not a bad seat in the house, right. great acoustics. Uh, the sound is great, a great vision on the stage right there. And, well, and, thank you. And, and for years now, and in, in the case here, great great musicals thank to watch you. and things thank you. coming up. And thank you. Great crowds to come out here. So I'd encourage you to go on the website, look them up, and either order your tickets online, or, or if you want to go out there, they're easy to get to. Just walk yep. in the entrance right there. Uh, box office is open now, so uh, golly, it's an exciting time. Victor. Yes, it is. It's an exciting time. Yes, it is. Well, I don't know if we'll get to you prior to the festival. That may be the next time we'll have you back, but you're going to be so busy here. We thought we'd get you before <laughs> it really starts breaking loose, because I know you'll hardly be able to take a breath with what's I'll going be on here. I'll I'll have you back. If, I'll come back if you you're, ask. You're looking forward to it. I and am. then we'll come back then and we'll talk about how all this went, which oh. I'm sure will be 
wonderful. Okay. So great, great success on Thank your, you very good much. luck with all this. It's, Thank you. It's just a, a wonderful job you've done Thank for you. the arts in Lancaster and, and Fairfield County. And, and thanks so much for doing it. Thank this. you very much. Victor Jones, who is the artistic director and, and, and runs the Wagner Theater in the old theater department out of Ohio University of Lancaster. They've got great things coming up. I encourage you to go to the website and find them. And be sure to not go anywhere. Fairfield Today will be right back. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. I want to thank the good folks here at Fairfield Federal for, of course, all the great things that they do for us every week, allowing us to come in here, rain or shine, snow or, or rain, anything, we're able to get in here. And right now, I, I did want to mention uh, about the arts. Uh, they have a really nice art show from young people who are just clients and people that are people that come in to Fairfield Federal. They have a really nice art show kind of beyond us, right behind the camera where Shane is shooting right now. But the folks here at Fairfield Federal, you know, if you have money needs as we get into the spring, thoughts turn to uh, new, new homes, renovation of your current home, you want to still add maybe a deck on the back, you want to do that kitchen where everybody hangs out in your house, maybe it's time to get that redone, or even maybe look at a new home you want to downsize or perhaps get bigger, fairfieldfederal.com is a great website to start. They have local people here, uh, Mary Snyder and everybody on down, Bruce Boffman, uh, uh, Kerry James, everybody here is very receptive and open. To, their phone numbers are on their website. They are local people that make local decisions and so a good place to start if you have any questions about money whether it's a personal account or a business account what they do on uh, online banking everything is available at fairfieldfederal.com many questions that you might have could be answered there but if that's the place you start they have phone numbers of people to call so I'd encourage you as you wonder about some perhaps uh, money needs that you might have a good place to start is fairfieldfederal.com Lovely to have you back with us. Thank you for having me. Fun to talk about the Lighthouse. Again, I think there's a lot of uh, pieces of misinformation on what you are and what you aren't. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we'll try to clear that up today. But as you look back at 2019, I don't know if you have any numbers in yet. As you look at the year, uh, what kind of year was it? for the lighthouse well you know it's i always tell people that no two days at the lighthouse are ever the same <laughs> uh, there are days clearly that i feel like um, i'm working outside of my pay grade but um, if it weren't for the staff that we had um, it, we couldn't do what we do um, every client's needs are separate and individual yeah. and um, we're not doing our job if we're not addressing the here and now um, but more importantly to show them that this, these moments in time don't have to define the rest of their life. Sure, sure. And it's very, very rewarding when a client does secure permanent housing. They have moved on. Um, they're extremely proud of themselves. And we feel like we're losing a family member, yet we're extremely proud of them because they, they had to put the work in. We can guide them, but we can't do it for them. So to answer your question about some numbers, uh, just in the first six months of this fiscal year, which started in July 1, um, we've had 1,802 nights of shelter to 71 individuals, and that those numbers are down a bit over this time last year. But again, it ebbs and flows. Um, right now, today, uh, we're packed. So you never know. Um, we have uh, processed 173 crisis calls, and that ties in a little bit to what we are not. Um, we receive an awful lot of questions from people thinking that we're a homeless shelter, That's and we are the, not. That's probably the number one thing that 
the people that don't know they don't they don't mean it in a certainly a derogatory way but they think well what what do people come there just to get away and they well there's you get a big definition for what you do sure um, any client that is brought in has to go through a crisis call and an awful lot of questions are asked of them um, that are required before uh, we're able to bring them in and uh, domestic violence certainly is uh, what will bring a client in um, Sadly, homelessness, as much as we would love to help, that's not what we're funded to do. Sure. Um, so we do make referrals to make sure that we do everything we can to find them a place to... Well, and there are places they can go, it's just not for you. Exactly, sure. exactly. And then you the, help them get there. Exactly. Uh, the other big part of what we do is, um, so far, in the first six months, we have secured 607 protection orders just in the first six months. Mm. And so basically, when you think about that, those aren't people who are seeking shelter. So the best way to define that would be, I am blessed, um, my parents are local, I have um, siblings that live in Fairfield County. Great support system. If something were to happen to me, I always use the example, if Tom were to fall and bump his head really, really hard and think the right thing to do would be to, you know, obviously make me a victim of domestic violence, I would reach out to my court advocate. I would secure a protection order that tells him he has to stay away from me. But I would have someplace else to go and I wouldn't have to necessarily call sure. the shelter. Sure. So when you think about those numbers, just in those first <clears throat> six months of this year, we've secured 607 protection orders. So when you talk about we're underreported and people don't necessarily hear a lot about us, a lot of that ties to we're not the type of conversation a lot of people are comfortable hearing. Sure. So um, it is necessary. There is a lot of domestic violence happening in Fairfield County. And um, certainly a lot of what we do is um, out seeking support so that we can continue to keep the doors open to help the next person that needs us. Let's talk about, you talked about the people you have. Tell me about your staff. Tell me about the people that, that do the day-to-day -day really tough work. Incredible people. Um, and many of them have been there um, four or five <clears throat> years or more. I have a caseworker, and um, Jess is phenomenal. She works with every other agency in Fairfield County to make sure that when a client comes in, um, if they need to secure employment, <clears throat> we're making the proper referrals to Job and Family Services. If they need to apply for some financial assistance, making sure they're getting to the right department at Job and Family. We work a lot through Fairfield County 211 to make sure that we're getting them into the places that they need to have for the help. Um, if a client needs taken to a doctor's appointment and they don't have a vehicle, we make sure you know, just to make sure that they get there. We also have child care. So when moms need to go to those appointments, whether it's job and family services, or perhaps it could be that they're interviewing for a job for two hours a day, um, they can actually leave their child no. in our care. And, and Deb's the one providing that child it's important. care. I have house managers. Uh, the lighthouse is open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So I have to have somebody there all day, all night. Um, holidays, weekends, it doesn't matter. I have some of the best house managers that you could ever imagine. Um, they don't get rattled. And to be in that job from the crisis call to, let's face it, we're bringing men and women in who have had a lot of trauma in their life. And we're saying, well, now, you're going to live in this group setting. Crap happens. Mm -hmm. What I can't have is a house manager that loses their cool. Sure. And they do a phenomenal job yeah. keeping up with that. Mm -hmm. um, I have, we just <laughs> talked about those 607 protection orders. It's hard to believe in Fairfield County, I have four full-time court advocates. Mm -hmm. They meet with clients. They, they set up appointments to get in front of a judge. They secure those temporary orders that then turn into a protection order that could be three to five years. Um, and all four of them stay busy all day, five days a week. It's unimaginable to me. There are other counties that are similar in size and don't have that many. Uh, we are very, very blessed and, and they're needed. Does a typical person that enters into your care, into your domain, does that typically start out with a crisis call? Is that generally how it all begins? Um, so yes and no. 
If they're looking for shelter, 100% of the time, yes. Okay. If they are looking for a protection order, that is a phone call um, that they can make to the shelter and, and we can make sure that they get in touch with one of the court advocates. Well, we've talked about a lot of tough situations here day to day. I mean, I'm sure your advocates down there can have stories. They could all write books. I mean, and you, as could you. Anybody in the shelter. Things in yes. that world, mm -hmm. in that world. Mm -hmm. But there's something kind of neat coming up here mm -hmm. uh, is your annual spring style show and luncheon. And we've got a nice poster we'll show on that. Uh, it's coming up here in about a month, March 7th. Yes. Uh, out at Crossroads Event Center out on West 4 Avenue, past the campgrounds out there, or near the campgrounds out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it sounds like it's going to be a great event. I'm sure you're looking forward to this. You know, last year was my first year to attend, and it was a pretty incredible event. Um, we'll have around 200 folks that come out, and they want to be a part of, nice. you know, a, a nice, nice afternoon out. And let's face it, uh, you know, February people are looking for something to do they've gotten through the holidays they're looking forward to spring and it's just a great day for everybody to come together um, kind of see what the spring fashions are going to be have a wonderful lunch but it's just more about the community um, this year tying in yes this year we have a survivor um, who is going to model and she's going to share a few uh, a few words about her story and how she ended up at the lighthouse um, an incredible woman um, with a couple of incredible, you know, a child that's hers and a child that she's raising, a uh, phenomenal person and people will get to hear her story. This year we're doing something a little different for tickets. We're asking people to go to Eventbrite. So if they just type that's in a website. Uh -huh, lhstyleshow.eventbrite.com, they will be able to purchase their tickets and take care of everything, even if they want to have a certain table that they want to sit at with certain people because mm -hmm. many, many women have been coming to this for years mm -hmm. and years mm -hmm. um, so they have their group that they want to come back they're able to accomplish all of that by simply um, signing on to Eventbrite however if anybody does have questions they can reach out to Anna Ditto who is the board vice president and um, the style show is her baby at 740-215-6253 and I'm sure this information is on your website it, it is being added as we speak okay LH event. style show yes Oh, Lighthouse Style Show. Yeah, dot it, event, eventbrite.com. Yes, but just the LH. Sure. LH Style Show. Yes, that's it. So, dot eventbrite.com. Uh, that's it's a fun. It's nice, probably, for some of the people to have kind of an uplifting moment like that. On for many of them, a difficult time. You know, it is. Um, last year, they asked me to speak, and it was probably too soon. I hadn't been employed by the Lighthouse long enough, and it mm -hmm. became very emotional to me because I didn't expect, um, nobody can expect to see what we see as the result of domestic violence. Sure. Um, but we, at that point in time, had just transferred a client who was a victim of human trafficking to a um, treatment center and uh, really reliving her story and sharing her thank you letter. It was very, very emotional for me because I hadn't wrapped my head around domestic violence and trafficking running hand in hand because it's all rooted in control. Mm -hmm. um, and the weekend of our style show last year was the same weekend as uh, the Arnold Classic, Fitness oh, Classic, no. and it's one of the largest human trafficking events in Columbus. So, I was reading yes. about that in the paper. I had yes. no idea. So it's all tied together, so it became quite emotional for me. So this year, should I speak, I think I'm going to be able to handle it a little better, um, but it is, we, we're a tough topic to talk about, no. and um, I would be lying to tell you that our uh, staff, you can't help but become personally involved in our clients and their stories sure. and sometimes there will be a few tears you can't help if you're if no. you're human and have a heart it's just where you go sometimes Pulls at your strengths mm -hmm. And we've only got about a minute, but I want to touch you. You've got a big golf outing coming up later, May. We do in May. Uh, as soon as we get done with the style show, we'll start advertising the golf outing. And that's in um, May at Valley View. It'll be out View. at Valley View. Yes, it will. Uh, we're changing it from a Saturday event this year to a Friday for many of those who said that, you know, they want to be able to pull corporate teams together, and that's a better day. Sure. So we know right now it's going to be Friday, May 15th, and it'll be a morning tea time. And um, just kind of looking forward to seeing what we do this year. Our guest has been Director 
Susan Nixon Stoughton from the Lighthouse, and I hope we've dispelled some rumors on what they don't do, on what you do do, and what you do is very well done. Thank I will you. say that. A great, great organization and a tough place day to day. You know, it's, you, you can't get into a lot of things going on, but we can kind of tough the highlights. Uh, look them up on, you can find them, Google them, go on your search engine, find them. Find out about the style show coming up here in about a month. Sounds like a great time, Susan. Always a pleasure to have you on. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Me. That's our show on Fairfield Today. Interface Video presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities, and the Frankie Smith Funeral Home.